All right. So this is a hard question. I think it's a little out of place. Normally you wouldn't get this hard of a question in uh, number eight of the hard module. It's a little early, but uh, regardless, you could see something like this. And the first thing you should notice as soon as you see a picture like this is this is similar triangles. Anytime you got a geometry question and there's like a couple of triangles, especially if they share sides and overlap, it's probably similar triangles and you're going to need to make a, a proportion of some kind to solve it. So there are a couple ways to do it because how many triangles do you see here? Most people say two. I say three. There are three triangles. And the college board's explanation has you working with the small triangle on the right and the uh, medium-sized triangle on the left, but I'm more interested in the big triangle um, over like the entire shape. So we're going to think about that. We're also going to think about the medium triangle here. So hopefully all my drawings make some sense and are easy to follow. Oh, I hate how that does that on the iPad. I want a nice thick, there you go. Anyway, let's see what we can do. We have some dimensions. We have um, this, uh, let's use this blue here. We have AD is 121 over three. We have AB is um, 11 radical 130 over three. So at any point we can turn these into decimals. But let's see if we can avoid it. Um, in order to solve similar triangles, we need to compare things that are kind of corresponding, that, that match up. So if I know that I have to end up here at DC, I'm thinking about how that relates to everything. And I, as much as I love DC, I don't see DC as being that particularly important right away. I notice that AC, the entire thing, is the hypotenuse of this big green triangle. So I'm gonna, com I'm gonna compare AC the hypotenuse, hypotenuse, to another hypotenuse, right? What's the hypotenuse of the pink triangle, the one on the left, the one that we know two sides of? That's, that's an important thing. That is 11 radical 130 over three. So we're comparing two hypotenuses, okay? But we need to set that equal to some other relationship. We need to set two sets of sides equal to each other. So uh, this is the, to be really clear, we've got the green on the top. I'm not going to highlight it, but that's the green triangle. And then on the bottom, we have the pink triangle. So we have to do the same thing on this side. We got to focus on matching things up. So we got the, the green on the top. We're going to have the pink on the bottom. Well, what do we know about either of these? Well, for the pink triangle, um, we are probably going to use this 121 over three. And if you look, that corresponds to the, um, the long leg of the pink triangle, right? So if you think about a right triangle, there's two legs, the things that are not hypotenuses. So this is the long leg. And you can see that AD, at least in this picture, even though it's not drawn to scale, is longer than BD. So we're gonna use that. It might not actually be true, but I don't care. Let's just use that because it looks long. That's the long leg of that triangle. So what is the long leg of the green triangle? Well, it looks like it's 11 radical 130 over three. So that seems pretty good. Um, at this point, we can start to solve because we have one piece missing and we have three pieces here. So we're comparing things that are all kind of in the right place. And now to solve, you just kind of do a lot of cross multiplication. So let's just do the old fashioned way. We could go to Desmos, but um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling adventurous. So 121 over three multiplied by AC is equal to 11 root 130 over three times I could square it, but 11 root 130 over three. And a lot of cool things happen. So let's just keep this side the same. Everything here kind of doubles up, right? So this 11 squared becomes 121. Radical 130 squared becomes just radical 130. And three times three is nine. So we have 121 over three. AC is equal to, uh, I'd love to kill off one of these nines, but that's okay. Let's just leave it as nine for now. And oof. 121 times 130 is 15,730, just using a regular calculator here. Now I can also think of this as another set of fractions that I can cross multiply. So uh, I'm gonna kind of extend my little um, bar there and cross multiply again. So this number times three is 47190, and that is equal to 121 times nine and uh, 1089 and that is AC. Let's now divide by 1089, 1089. I doubt this is gonna work out nicely, but we're gonna try it anyway. 147, 190 divided by 
1089 is, yeah, 43.3 repeating. But I can turn that into a fraction. Uh, uh, this is where Desmos is actually helpful. So I'm going to show you something because this calculator stinks at making things fractions. So if I did 4, 7, 1, 9, 0 divided by 1089, you can see I get the same number. But if I hit this little button right to the left of it that looks like a fraction, it turns it into one. So that is 130 over 3, and that is my value of AC. Now be careful, right? What did they want? Go back, DC. And the reason I didn't use X or Y or whatever this entire time in doing my algebra is I knew that I didn't want an X. I didn't want to just stop short at the end. I'm getting AC, but I want DC. I want that part of it. So I need to go back now and subtract out this extra piece, which isn't that hard, but it's easy to forget to do that. And so my recommendation whenever you have a geometry problem is don't use X's and Y's unless they use X's and Y's label things as they're labeled on the picture so that way you're always keeping track of what you're actually solving for and if they want something different you don't forget to do that so the last step here is if this whole thing is 130 over 3 let's go back what do we do we have to subtract this from this to get x so 130 over 3 minus 121 over 3 well that's really easy that's 9 over 3 which is 3 and that is that that's the answer done. Again, there are places where we could have gone on the calculator, but, uh, you know, I was feeling like, let's just do the fractions and stuff like that. So up to you, you know, the, if we have decimals, it's fine. My only worry about having decimals throughout all this is then we are tempted to round uh, just to shorten things because a lot of these are radicals. They're going to be messy numbers. And so uh, if we round, we might end up with an answer that's rounded as well. And then if you bubble like 2.97, you know, you're not going to get the answer right. It's it's even three. And so you got to be careful if you're if you're dealing with decimals because if you want to go to the calculator with things and then you're rounding those decimals, you, you got to unround them at the end and it's hard to know how much you got to unround them. So um, I don't know. If you have any thoughts on that, if you did it with, with decimals and, and you kind of got to some answer that you had to work with and I'm curious, put it in the comments. I'm curious how that works. Um, the other way to do it, uh, I'm not going to get into it, but, uh, the other way to do it is to use Pythagorean theorem to find this side here. Um, and then to create another ratio of triangles that specifically focuses on the small one, uh, the small triangle, small, and use that to compare to, I guess the, the pink triangle on the left. So, uh, you got some options, but, uh, yeah, like I said at the beginning, as soon as you see a picture with a bunch of triangles, there's only so many triangle things that could happen in the SAT. Similar triangles being one of them. You know, I don't, I, you're not using trigonometry here. There's no angles. Uh, and uh, there's no like special things like 30, 60, 90s or anything like that. So um, use the formula chart if you need to, to remind you of triangle formulas. But remember, similar triangles are on there. You just got to know that that exists. And anytime you have a bunch of triangles, they're probably in proportion somehow. So it's a, it's a good thing to default to.